The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'll tell you a story that I heard when I was at Bear Canal about 15, 20 years ago. I was told the story there. I did not independently check up to see that the details are true. I know that there is a historical record of some aspects of the story, but, I, but I'm going to tell you an unbelievable story. The people in the Sander Command, the Sander Command were the people, Rahman al they pulled the bodies out of the gas chambers and brought them to Sreifa to, to burn the bodies. That was the Sander Command's job. I'm not going to go into some of the details of their work, which was horrendous, horrendous. So the Sander Command, at some point, this is the way it goes down in history, that they realized that their turn was coming up next. <clears throat> Many people in the camps, Taka did not know. Certainly they came to the camps, they didn't know what, what, and what fate way, awaited them. But the Sandra Kaman knew, because they were the people doing this. So the way the story goes, that people, they, it's going to happen, and they tried to hatch a plan to where they could actually blow up one of the gas chambers. They were connected to the crematoria, by the way, gas chambers generally. So they were able to have contacts among the Polish partisans, and they're able to concoct a plan whereby the Polish partisans got together gunpowder, which they would collect and use as a bomb. And how did they do that? There was a section of the camp that was called Canada. Auschwitz, Birkenau. A section of the camp that was called Canada. What's such Canada? Why was it called Canada? Canada was known to be a rich country. <laughs> rich country, people live very well there. The people who worked in that section of the camp, it was their job to sort out the clothing, the suitcases, to sort that out. And for the Germans, for the Nazis, they would use it afterwards, right? Very often, you could find a piece of bread in someone's pocket. Very often, you could find a candy. <laughs> to us, it sounds like a trinket, but to them, it was mamish life-saving. So they had a better life. They were better nourished than the other people because they were able to actually come into possession of life-giving calories. Calories. <clears throat> Also, that section of the camp was right at the boundary of the camp where the fences were. So the Polish partisans, if they needed to, when they needed to, at times they could pass things through the fence. So listen to the plan that they came up with to blow, to blow up one of the crematoria. They found two sisters who worked in Canada who were willing to go on a suicide mission because they had to get the, the gunpowder into the hands of the Sander Command because they were the ones who were actually going to blow up the plant. And what they did was they made sure that the gunpowder was passed through the fence to two sisters who worked in Canada. The two sisters decided they would hide the gunpowder, I'm not going to go into detail, but on their bodies. They would do something for which they knew they'd be sent to the gas chambers. They would be killed in the gas chamber. And the standard command, knowing who the two sisters were and what numbers they had on their arm, they'd be able to identify them and remove the gunpowder. You had this plan? This was the plan. Talk about desperation. By the way, nothing, no ever, no mutiny, no attack, no ever succeeded. The little limited ones, this was one limited victory that they had, but it never ever really succeeded. And they used to kill hundreds in retaliation afterwards. So to make a long story short, the two sisters volunteered. They carried out the plan. They went, they were gas in the gas chambers. And the standard command pulled their bodies out. They looked at the numbers. They removed the explosives. And both sisters survived. There were stories of people surviving gas chambers. People came out, brain damage, whatever it was. They were, they were unconscious. And when they removed the gunpowder, they realized that they were survived. They went on to survive the war. I want to make a very incredible, I mean, this is a nace, but a nace, but a nace. What are you talking about? When you do for somebody else, when you do for other people, it's unbelievable what shefa there is. When you do for somebody else, it's hafla fellow mamish. Every single person can take a myopic view and focus completely upon himself. Or you can focus upon yourself. But yourself includes the people around you. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.